What's exciting about coming to work every day is I really believe strongly in the products that we're building and the way in which we're pushing innovation in order to make the lives of the folks in harm's way easier and safer. I was always a big fan of math and science, so for years I'd get up and watch space shuttle launches whenever they were airing on television. So I'd be getting ready for school and I'd be watching all the astronauts come down and go to the van and get on board. So really transformational for me the day that Sally Ride walked out of the building, got on the Astrovan. Never seen a woman do this before. I was like, oh, I didn't know that women could do this and decided I wanted to do space for my career. I went to an all-women's college. I came from a place where women were expected to succeed and engage and do all the work because that's we were all women in the classroom. So by the time I got out into the field where it was mostly men in the room, um, it wasn't unusual for me to just do my work. The way I got to NASA was through a contact at MIT while I was still a graduate student. I was sitting in my office one day and my advisor came down the hall and he poked his head and he said, hey, you wanna go work at NASA for the summer? And I was like, of course, of course I do, what, what's going on? And they had been building the very first humanoid robots. And they had a lot of roboticists and control theorists, but they didn't have anybody who understood the human part of it and how to operate it and what it would mean to interface with it. So that following summer, I uh, drove down to NASA and started work full time and then made Robonaut my PhD project. The difference between the Teledyne FLIR position and the other one that I had looked at um, was really it came down to the people and I really just enjoyed everybody on the team that I spoke with. I also loved the idea of getting back to my roots in robotics. It was a place where I felt like I could add some value and also learn and to me that's the most important part of what makes a great career in my opinion. A place where you can add value and be of service and a place where you can learn and grow. I know from talking to students, I used to do a lot of outreach at NASA and talk to a lot of young girls in STEM, teachers in STEM, women in STEM. And I was amazed at how much excitement there was around a woman who was doing something in the sciences. And this young eight-year-old girl came up to me and she said, oh, Dr. Rackless, she said, I love robots and that was so exciting. She's like, and I would love to do this, but I will just, I will never be as smart as you. And I got down to her level and I was like, I don't know who's telling you this. I said, but you can do anything you want. I said, I didn't know any of this when I was your age. I learned it all because I thought it was interesting and I wanted to spend time on it. It's completely understated how powerful it is to model what it looks like for women to be doing all of the roles that are out there for us to be doing. Now is a really interesting time in our history where there's so much that's about to change um, and we're gonna need a lot of people to be able to think differently uh, to be successful. So I would say um, keep that open mind, stay curious, keep asking questions, and be all in.